these are the kind of books that if someone comes to me for advice on anything, if it's a relationship, whether it's nutrition, fitness, motivation, wellness, sleep, the, the benefits of prioritizing your own health before you help others, boundaries, trauma, therapy, friendship. I can't think of one situation in life that could not be boiled down to one of these five books helping. Today's episode is brought to you by Organifi. This is absolutely my most trusted and favorite brand, and I wanted to share it with you all and make sure you had the absolute best code. I always recommend the greens juice powder. I take the green apple flavor. I take it with me when I travel. I give it to friends. I gave it away as a secret Santa gift. I am absolutely obsessed. It is such a great way to start your day and ensure that you are staying regular, having your morning conference calls. It's a great way to lay the foundation in your gut for your nutrition, for your nutrients and your minerals, even before you have that first cup of coffee. If you have been interested in greens powders, highly recommend Organifi. And if you are like me and you like to biohack your life and you like to up level in every way, also I recommend the protein powder. I'm almost out of it myself and need to re up. I'm obsessed because it has this rich, chocolatey, almost coconutty flavor, but it is all plant based with digestive enzymes. So there's no crazy bloat. You don't feel super full afterwards, but you feel satisfied. I always put it in my oatmeal. I'll put it in a little smoothie once in a while. I will mix it into my Greek yogurt for extra protein and extra flavor. I like the chocolate flavor, but I think I might be mixing it up and doing a vanilla next time I order my Organifi. If you want to try these products and be like me, biohack, be like all of your most wellnessy friends. And if you have people around you that you want to motivate, just start adding protein to everything that tastes good and that you want to fill you up a little bit more. And then also adding in the greens juice in your morning, it will change your life. You can use the code HTH for 20% off of any of their products. Again, that is code HTH. You can use it to lay the foundation for your gut health in the morning before your first cup of coffee with the greens juice or use it to up-level your satiety hormones and use the protein. Again, code is HTH. You can go to Organifi.com backslash HTH or use the code in the show notes for 20% off. You won't regret it. Enjoy. Welcome back to this week's episode of Hotter Than Health. My name is Eliza Gelman. You know it. You love it. You've heard it here before. And if this is your first time listening to Hotter Than Health, welcome. And I appreciate you being here. We know that this is a health, wellness, nutrition, lifestyle podcast, and today is no different. I wanted to give a tangible episode on a few things that, surpri- not surprisingly, but in a different vein, are really, uh, they get a lot of traction when I talk about it on social media, and I figured this would be a similar platform. Similar people follow the podcast as they do on social media, and people in... Uh, let me rewind. Hello. Happy Thursday. We're here. We've made it. This week has been busy. We've been hitting the ground running in Charlotte. There was this massive storm that to the naked eye didn't seem that massive, but then uh, uh, you look around and all of the buildings didn't, no buildings had power. Luckily I live near a hospital and none of the power went out. Blessed to be on that grid. And The reason for this episode is I started reading a a particular book uh, and I'm reading it with someone, which is nice. And I've never done that before is obviously I've done book clubs, but I haven't consistently read like every day we'll have a call and or we'll have a in-person time to read a chapter and talk about it. And it goes pretty consistently and it's been really pivotal. That made me consider some of the different books that have been really monumental in my personal development, whether that be through nutrition or mindset work, whether it is trying to figure out the best way to plan my days, the books that have been the most impactful for me have not been these crazy encyclopedic 
data heavy books, which I do love, especially when it's about nutrition and the mind, the brain, how it functions. But these have all been books that I think we've either heard of or considered, but have not visited, or maybe you have in the past and you haven't, maybe this will be your nudge to get involved with these books. Books, okay, is that just me? Or maybe it was Fifty Shades of Grey that really, really got books back back on the map. But obviously, there are some people who have been bookworms their whole life. They're just really into books. They've always enjoyed them. Some people, namely myself, I've always loved reading, but I've always been a fairly slow reader. So it's not like I was devouring a book a month. There'd be like a couple books a year consistently. I feel like since 2022, maybe books have just gotten to be like the hot, sexy thing to do now. Everyone has book clubs. Everyone's talking about books. Everyone is, even in the airports, they just have really good, maybe this is just me because obviously confirmation bias and you see what you want to see. I really do feel like more people are talking about books. Books are becoming trendy. Lots of podcasts do book clubs, all that. We're going to dive into some of these books. I also just wanted to let you all know that if you are going to invest in anything for your kitchen, kitchen, my your kitchen, I was just gifted a large blue Le Creuset. Uh, it's like a Dutch oven, but it has the bottom of a wok, which is a rounded base as opposed to more of that flat bottomed base. base. It's definitely an investment, but it was a gift that I cannot get over it not only is an beautiful accessory for your kitchen or I'm sorry it's not only an amazing cooking tool and it lasts forever and it's sturdy but it's also gorgeous in your kitchen highly recommend if you're a foodie and you don't know what to ask for or you really want to indulge in something and you're feeling like you want to reinvent yourself in the kitchen highly recommend I got this really beautiful um, it's a light blue almost ocean sandy green blue color and it's absolutely divine I made a giant pot roast yes we're eating meat again and I cannot get over it it's amazing I even left it out on the stove for hours and hours I took it out of the fridge to eat the leftovers because I just stored it in there in the fridge and I took it out set it on the stove it was out for like three hours and I came back still completely cool it just captures the heat and it captures the coolness if you needed to cool it down and I can't recommend it enough wow, that's not relevant, but here we are. Again, if this is your first time listening, head to Apple Podcasts, leave us five stars, and leave us a review. It is the greatest, absolute greatest way to share the podcast and help it grow. And if this is not your first time listening to the podcast, welcome back, and I hope that you do the same. Leave us five stars, subscribe wherever you're listening. The first book we're going to talk about is something that I was just talking with someone about today. It's a book that I read when I was living in Charleston. I believe, I I think I read it five years ago, maybe. It it was long enough ago that I know I need to read it again, but you, you got the basis of it. It's called Miracle Morning. And you might think that you already know exactly what it's about. And maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you do think you know what it's about. But this book, The Miracle Morning by... Oh, would you look at that? I am super prepared. Uh, Oh, I knew this. The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. It's a beautiful, simple, quick book to read. And really what it is, is breaking down the importance of prioritizing your morning. And we talk about morning routines all the time. And we're like, oh, drink your green juice and have your water, do your things. And all of those components are incredible. However, All of those components could easily be pushed off to other parts of the day. Oh, I forgot to drink my green juice this morning. I'll do it in the afternoon. Oh, I didn't meditate. I'll do it before bed. The whole genesis of this book is the importance of morning, the importance of beginning your day in a proactive state rather than a reactive state. When you wake up in a reactive state, it's essentially like getting a phone call in the middle of the night saying, oh my gosh, there's an emergency. You need to get somewhere. You need to do something. This happened. X, Y, Z. We all know what that feels like. And it feels like, 
a, a loud horn is being blasted in your face. Or maybe it's as simple as having an email come in early from your boss and you immediately check it and you're immediately wired. And whether or not you still have, you know, a normal morning after that text message or after that email, you'll still be wired for that stress for the rest of the day. You can definitely do things to calm your nerves, but you're wired for that all day. The importance of waking up a little bit earlier, for some people that might be 10 minutes, for some people that might be a full hour, the importance of waking up on your own accord, waking up based on your own timing. It's much easier to wake up if you have set the alarm for yourself or if you have something interesting to go do. It's never fun if, you know, the fire alarm goes off early or someone else's dog is barking or whatever it is that wakes you up or that text message goes off. Waking up on your own, setting aside, let's say half an hour before the world starts going, before work starts going and prioritizing yourself and the grounding practices that get you involved in your own mind and get you going, whether that's for you reading some uh, reading some faith-based book, re- praying in the morning, meditating in the morning, stretching, doing something that feeds your soul and feeds your wellness. The Miracle Morning is a fantastic way of quickly reading through a book, getting yourself motivated. And if you have struggled, especially it's in the new year, if you're still struggling with, hey, what can I do to motivate myself? Everyone else is feeling motivated. It seems like everyone else is motivated in the beginning of the year. I'm not. What can I do? This is a phenomenal book that will kick you into gear. The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Couldn't recommend it enough. It's simple. It's easy. And you guys remember my hack. I talk about this all the time. But if you go on Amazon and you look in the filters or you have to do I don't know, click on some bars and click on condition of products and click used or good. When it comes to book books, I don't need a brand new, beautiful copy. I'm happy to have a used, worn book. It's not like I'm buying underwear. It's a book. Highly recommend checking it out. You'll save a bunch of money or go to your public library, which I need to do. I need to do. Public libraries, it's the new club. Okay. The next book is actually a book that I'm reading on tape right now. Uh, on tape, hello. My dad used to get books on tape. He would get the, he would go to the public library, rent one of those cassette tape books, like an entire package of them, CDs, and we would listen to books on tape. And I was never into it when he did it, just because I thought. I mean, eventually I got into the stories, but it took me a while and I was was like, oh, dad reads boring books. And uh, eventually I ended up, I ended up liking them. And now here we are all these years later, enjoying it. Thanks, dad. The next book is The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. And this is by Bessel van der Kolk, MD. I'm reading this book right now and this is not reading to fix me. This is not reading to completely alter and and this isn't therapy. However, it is extremely informative when it comes to how certain events in our life, whether it be you are coming back from the war or you're a spouse who has dealt with emotional turbulence and emotional abuse, whether you are a mother who dealt with like really intense childbirth, maybe you were in a car accident, maybe someone near you or yourself had an extreme medical condition or traumatic issue, maybe maybe you lost a parent, maybe you lost a friend, something traumatic in your life. And it's not to say that any one trauma is worse than the other because in everyone's scope of their life, they all they have to compare anything to is their own scope. And this book is, I'm only about four chapters in, maybe five, but so far it's really painting a picture of how the, the actual mind and your phys- physiology, your body changes when something traumatic happens. Your mind, of course, is going to be conditioned in a certain way, but your body 
really does change physiologically when you when you experience these traumas unpacking that going through it going through examples going through different drugs and medicine uh quick quick aside about this book my my aunt she is check this out i mean the apple could not have fallen farther from this tree this is the most brilliant woman that i know and aside from you alexa and she is a professor emeritus at harvard she is i am going to butcher everything and if you hear this i am so sorry bun bun went to yale went to northwestern went to duke what now works at harvard as her first job she is absolutely brilliant and she studies the brain she studies brain imaging she has done research for years and years and years on pain different parts of the brain that deal with pain she she literally deals with the brain she is a a brain scientist researcher and travels all over the world as a absolute expert to giving keynotes and all of these things i saw her that she was reading this i saw her a couple of days ago and i said oh my gosh we're me and this genius are reading the same book and she said that she's reading through this to learn more about it some of the views could be considered uh controversial so i'm really reading it for my own scope her and i are going to talk about it and i'll i'll come back and see what her actual professional opinion is i might try and get her on the podcast or at least a friend of hers who deals in um like metabolic portions of the brain and how they are correlated to eating habits and eating patterns. I find that very interesting. Either way, The Body Keeps the Score. It is by Bessel van der Kolk, and it's an incredibly popular book. It's been around for a really long time, but it's if you if you want to learn about people in general, this will light your brain on fire in the best way. The next one is How to Change Your Life by Louise Hay. And I wrote this list out, and then I started listening to an episode of a podcast that Melissa Wood Health Tepperberg, or Melissa Wood Tepperberg was talking about. She's a celebrity on Instagram who is super into wellness and holistic practices. And she was talking about this book too. And I thought, ah, cool, on the same page. This is a, this is a classic book. It's been around for a long time, uh, and it's called How to Change Your Life. It is I read it a few years ago uh, on, I read it, I read the book a few years ago and then I read it on, or I listened to it on tape again. Nothing will challenge the way that you speak to yourself in as big of a way as this book will. It really affected me because it, there are so many things that we say to ourselves that we, we don't even consider bad or mean or low negative, scarce, until you really deep dive into it. And this book really shook me and it it confronted me in the way that I thought about money, the way I thought about relationships, those around me, myself. And one of the coolest parts about it was that it it makes you instantly aware. Some books, it takes a little while to tap into the messaging of it, and it takes a little while to really think, okay, well, I can apply this to my life. But this is one of the only books that I've ever read, along with others on this list, but one of the only books that I've read in the personal development space that it takes these really, really broad concepts, which is, you know, positive thinking, which sounds really kind of cheesy. It takes these really nebulous concepts and drills in actual examples and ways to catch yourself. I think it was amazing. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And and pretty opposite of the next book. In in the sense of this was taking really nebulous, big, broad concepts of positive thinking and, and making it more simple. And then this next book, it's actually giving you tasks and tips and tricks. The next one is Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aubrey Marcus. I think I read this uh, 
God, maybe six, seven years ago. I don't remember. This was one of the first books that really got me hype about cold plunging and saunas and putting butter in the coffee, which it took me a couple years to even get into, which I started doing a few years ago. And I'm, look, maybe even two years ago, the, no, I'm sorry, a year for the butter. Knew all about it. Didn't do it often. Mostly was doing collagen and protein. Now I do both. Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aubrey Marcus. I really liked this one. This was in, if you don't know who Aubrey Marcus is, if you look him up on Instagram now, it's a much more spiritual practice. He's definitely much more involved in like relationships and sexual energy and and his whole culture and vibe has shifted away, not away from, but he mostly promotes different things. This was during his era of talking about plant medicine, nutrition, the highest quality supplements, talking really, really specifically about how to like biohack yourself, essentially. And this book was in the beginning of my biohacking era, which was so fun, is still so fun. It really cracked me open and got me excited about these things. And the chapters it, it looks like a long book, but the chapters go by so fast because there's, okay, there's the explanation of what to do, there's why you do it, and then there's the practical, okay, this is how you implement it, and then this is how it affected him or how it can affect you. So it does the, you know, give the fact, explain the fact, and then put it into an example. It's, it's good for any type of reader. It's not just like a bunch of data. There's also analogies and stories, and it's entertaining. I was... I ate that book up, read it a couple times. It's awesome. Own the Day, Own Your Life, Aubrey Marcus. The next one is more specific towards nutrition. And this book is definitely more geared toward plant dominance, which I still would consider myself fairly plant dominant, but definitely more balanced in the sense of, you know, animal proteins, greens, healthy fibers, fats, all that good stuff. It's called... Uh, How Not to Die by Michael Greger. Very famous book. It's done a lot of great things. It absolutely changed the way I approached food and overall nutrition. I have it sitting on one of the, on my bookshelf that people see. I like to have a couple books for, for show and then a couple books that really are thought provoking and then a couple that are fiction that just are, are fun, easy light. This is one I have up there. It's bold enough that you can take the information and assimilate it in the way that you want. Highly recommend this if you are interested in reading about nutrition. This is it, It's fairly dense, but there are enough people who listen to this podcast who are interested in really taking in info and, and are just so... If you're really into like the nutrition part of your life right now and you are feeling motivated already about food... And in eating healthy and eating clean and just like cleaning up your life, this is a great one. How Not to Die by Michael Greger. It's dense, it's great, and it will absolutely you'll look at food not in a not in a way that in my perspective, not an unhealthy way. It's just a lot of information. And I love that. The last one, because I don't want to overwhelm. The last one is I had to have talked about this book before. It's called The Almanac of Naval by Naval Ravikant. It's actually not by him. It's I think maybe the foreword plus the entire book is by Tim Ferriss, who is a famous podcaster, famous writer, author, researcher, and biohacker, all these things. I'm probably butchering that. Businessman, who knows? Uh, but he idolizes Naval. Naval Ravikant is a serial entrepreneur but he's also got a really monk like monk like mentality he goes through tons of different stories in this book of how naval created nothing something from nothing and what he would physically do if he because he's i mean a million millionaire a lot of this is about wealth and happiness and i like the way he does it because it's not just about you know, okay, this is your Roth IRA and you do this and you do that. It's like, look, money is great. And this is how you can create business out of something that you actually love. But what it all boils down to is happiness. And let's talk about the tenets of happiness. He does such a great job of 
really breaking it down because I think a lot of the times we see someone with all this money and you're like, okay, well, you had this unfair advantage. Oh, well, we always, we never give people the credit that they deserve. We need to do that better. Even if, anyways, that's a whole other story. If he were dropped off on the side of the road in the middle of Schenectady or in the middle of Mississauga, Canada, wherever he was, if he was dropped off with nothing, no ID, no money, nothing to his name, he walks through how he would physically build a business to make a million dollars. And the the cool thing is, is that it really does seem, he goes, I mean, it's not easy because it requires work, consistency, and effort and research on your own part, but it is simple. And I like his, his clarification on that. Easy and simple are not the same. Building a business and making a million dollars is simple, but it's not easy. Like you got to put in that work. And that's called the Almanac of Naval. Also, it is on Spotify. I believe that most of these books, if you have Spotify premium, they have audiobooks. You can type it in. I know personally, The Body Keeps the Score uh, and The Almanac of Naval are both on Spotify Premium. The other, others I'm not positive about. Could have done that research beforehand. I did not. Sorry. And I'm going to take a little picture of this note that I have and put it on the put it on the Instagram for when this episode is posted. I hope that these I hope that this is helpful. I know that not everyone is a reader and a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm not much of a reader, but I like audiobooks. This is it. This is your time to shine, baby. Make your commute to work a time where you are expanding the brain. You know, maybe you're running out of things to do and maybe you want to be quiet. Of course, you can always be quiet and do your thing. But if you have that moment to be expansive and you have that bandwidth and your brain has that capacity at that moment, highly recommend deep diving into some of these books. There was one more in here. I'm not even going to get to it. Hope this was helpful. If y'all have questions or if you end up reading any of these books, please let me know. I think that they are worth it. They're books that you can have on your shelf and revisit throughout your entire life. If this was helpful, let me know and we can do another one. Next week, I do want to talk about creatine because it's, again, all the rage right now in conversation. It's been around for forever, but I think that we should do an episode on the details behind it. What are the controversies? Why do people say, oh, don't do it? Why? What are some of the reasons why people get freaked out by creatine? And then how can we debunk some of those myths? And is there a good brand? Are there good things to try? I think this will be a better conversation to have after I've done a little more research. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening. And I will talk to you all, well, evening, day, whenever you're listening. Enjoy, and I will talk to you next Thursday. Oh! <laughs>